Hi, I'm Dr. Chad Larson. One of the most common reasons why people come to see me is they want to lose weight. Sometimes it might be amongst a, a list of other things, like they have knee pain, or they have gastrointestinal issues, or they have some other issue, but you know, weight loss is just one of their you know, three or four or five health goals. And so um, I thought I'd just give you kind of the basic framework of how we address that. Oftentimes we have to individualize it. There's a lot of individuality and kind of specifics from person to person that we have to kind of tailor things a little bit. But this is a good basic framework that's gonna work uh, for most people. So basically when we think of uh, a health goal or like an objective, we, we sort of frame it from that vantage point and then we come up with the, what is the strategy to achieve that objective? And then what are the tactics or the steps in order to uh, reach that strategy, which ultimately reaches that objective. So basically, um, weight loss, or I would reframe that to fat burning, uh, would be the objective. The strategy has to be hormone balancing. And with kind of the chief hormone, at least in this regard with fat burning, the chief hormone is insulin. We've talked about that in other episodes. There's other hormones absolutely that are involved. In fact, the whole endocrine hormonal symphony very much works together. So um, it's almost like you can't change one hormone without changing other ones. So, but as far as fat burning, insulin is at kind of the top of that list. So we have to really get a hold of insulin. Um, and so that leads us to the steps or the tactics. And there's different tactics that we consider. But in the category of fat burning, number one on the list is, um, is we have to get rid of foods that have added sugar in it. Because when there's fat accumulation, that means that there's been a spillover of blood sugar in the system and the body has converted that blood sugar into triglycerides and stored it as body fat. That's just basic physiology. So in order to force a person's body to start burning that fat for fuel, we have to stop putting more sugar in the system. So you have to look at your labels and make sure that nothing, you know, definitely the top three ingredients should not have sugar. And it doesn't matter if it's organic cane sugar or whatever the sugar is, you just can't have it on the list of foods that you're consuming. Um, that's number one. Number two, well, let's just say, let's add on to number one a little bit. In, this is where some individuality comes, comes in. In certain individuals, sometimes we have to kind of press on the carbohydrates even a little bit more. If they're already more advanced uh, in their blood sugar dysregulation, then sometimes we have to drop also things like refined grain type carbohydrates. Even some people, we have to drop um, excess fruit that they're having, um, high uh, fructose in the diet from fruit sugar um, or from consuming fruit could also add to this. But at the very least, we want to decrease um, any added sugar to any of the products that you're consuming. That's number one. Number two is we want to eliminate snacking completely. Um, snacking, it's, you know, the, the food industry deserves an A plus in their marketing, uh, kind of trying to teach us that we actually need to have multiple snacks per day. You have breakfast and then you have snack. You have lunch and then you have snack. And then you have dinner and then you gotta have a little snack before you go to bed. And there's just no physiological reason for that whatsoever. In fact, this is one of the key reasons why we've become so overweight and obese is because every time that we consume foods during any of that period of time, either if a main meal or a snack, that causes a rush of insulin. And we know that when insulin is up, the fat burning hormones are down and fat burning is just not gonna happen. So in order to get insulin low for you know, a certain period of the day, then we want to have no snacking in between meals. So that's number two is no snacking in between meals, even if it's a healthy snack and this kind of thing. As you start to set your body up to this way physiologically, then in that low insulin period between meals, guess what you're going to be doing? You're going to be burning fat for fuel. You're, the, the, you know, the food industry has done a great job making you maintain your garbage you know, garbage carbohydrates, your garbage roller coaster, up and down, up and down, up and down. So we want to help you get off that roller coaster. So you got to stop snacking. Um, number three is you should uh, balance the time period of eating with a time period of fasting. So let's say you typically have an eating window of 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. You have your three main meals during that period of time. 
uh, then we want to make sure that we have an equal window, at least an equal window of a fasting period. So you want to go from 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. So basically you're going 12 and 12. You have a 12 hour eating window and you have a 12 hour fasting window. This is the way at the minimum that just humans have been set up for a very, very long period of time. But if you read the research, it's it's really blown out. Um, it's, you know, sometimes people are eating like, you know, 18 hours a day and with a very, very small uh, fasting period, 16, 18 hours a day of, of eating. And it's no wonder why the body's just accumulating fat. There's just such a spillover of of glucose and blood sugar and other just excess calories that the body has to store that in some way it's got to, the body's got to do something with it and so that's uh, number three on the list is we want to balance our eating window with a fasting window um, and then number four is let's see if we can increase that fasting window particularly if fat burning is a really key goal for you um, it's a key objective that you're that you really want to have um, you want weight loss, and really what we mean by weight loss is we want fat loss. There's really no other weight loss that we care about other than fat loss. Sometimes people are retaining excess fluid, but this is usually because of also blood sugar dysregulation and uh, insulin imbalance. So even when there's water retention, it's still basically fat burning that we're trying to ac accomplish. And there's nothing better for fat burning than an extended fasting period. So you want to, number four is just to increase that overnight fasting period. So in number three, we talked about the 12 and 12, a 12 hour fasted window, a 12 hour eating window. That's a nice balance. If we want to um, kind of increase the fat burning or your body composition is such that you need to burn, um, you know, a really excessive amount of body fat, then the best and fastest way to do that is to increase that overnight fasted period. So instead of 12 hours, maybe you go 14 hours and then you have a 10 hour eating window. Or maybe you go, you know, try that for a little while and then maybe you can push that to 16 hours and have an eight hour eating window. Basically what you're doing is, is you're dropping uh, one meal a day. It's like, it's like basically you're dropping breakfast. Um, you can still drink coffee, you can still drink tea, still have plenty of water, but during that fasted period, um, you want to have uh, no real caloric type food. So that's uh, number four on the list is increasing that fasted period. And particularly if you have a certain amount of, let's say, body composition or body fat where your waist is um, greater than half the length of your height. So we call this the waist to height ratio. If that's over 0.5, so if you're you know, 70 inches tall, your waist should be 35 inches or less to be at that 0.5, right? So if you are 0.5, 0.48, 0.49, just that shorter intermittent fasting period would probably suffice. If you're at like 0.51, if you're, you know, a 36 inch waist and you're 70 inches tall, then um, this is uh, a risk factor for things like cardiovascular illness. And we've had videos um, about that in the past. So if you fall into that category, then we want to try to increase uh, the fasted period even longer to a 24 hour fasting period. And that could be done once a week, um, once every seven to 10 days. If you want to be a little bit more, you know, if you're more of a cannonball into the pool kind of person, more so than wading slowly into the pool. Um, or if your physiology is such that where you can handle that kind of thing, then you might go with two 24 hour fasted periods. If you start to get, you know, around this, um, fasted period, you want to see that, um, have somebody that could monitor you a little bit just to make sure that everything's okay. But as long as you stay hydrated and you don't have any other major underlying health issues, uh, this should not be a problem at all. We've done it many, many times with uh, really no side effects at all. But if you've done numbers one through four over a period of time, maybe a couple of weeks, you're creating the situation inside your system where you can handle a longer period of fasting. And a great way to do this 24 hour fast is dinner to dinner. So there's not even a full calendar day where you're not eating. Basically you stop, you know, let's say I just eat normally today. I eat dinner and then I don't eat again, basically until tomorrow at dinner time. And there's your 24 hour period. You can still have coffee, tea, water. Um, and some people, we even want to do some bone broth, some kind of salted uh, bone broth um, that just kind of helps them get through that. Um, 
So it gets much, much easier if you've, as you've done it a few times. I've heard that over and over and over again from friends and patients who, um, who have done that. It just gets much, much easier as you do the first time. It's more of a psychological thing, just mentally. It just seems kind of weird that you're not eating. But once you do it a few times, you realize that your body is very well adapted fat. And in fact, most people give me feedback that they feel great when they do that. Um, so that's the list. Just a, a quick recap, recap drop. Um, uh, any foods that have uh, added sugar to it, that's number one. Number two, no snacking. Number three, you want to balance your fasted. You fasted, and call it fed state, fasted and fed state, at least a 12 and 12 uh, hour period. Uh, number four would be to increase that fasted period to maybe 14 hours and then 16 hours. You could do that gradually over time, maybe two, three, four weeks of uh, experimenting with that. And then when you're ready for it, do um, a 24 hour fast. You can do that as many as a couple times a week. If your body composition is such that you have to burn more body fat or at least once a week, um, there's lots of great results and it's just a ton of excellent research that really backs this up. And I've tried it many, many times with patients now and it just flat out works. So that's kind of the basic framework that I just want to give you um, for weight loss and fat burning. So I hope uh, that's helpful and uh, I'll keep reading the studies and bringing you the information. Until then, keep it real.